Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Um, in honor of the resource booster that we just had for an event, I'm going to be doing a quick 101, I guess my version of a quick 101. Um, I'm going to do a three-part video, uh, three videos in parts of how to farm resources. This is the 101 video. This is targeted for new players. Um, then I'm going to go into like a 102, more advanced tactics. And then the final one is going to be dojo level farming, uh, which I guess is like the final frontier where you truly get into like hyper farming. Um, so the 101 is, this one is just going to explain how you can look up yourself where to farm something. Because the, the game really, if you can't find where something is, to be honest, I don't blame you. Uh, there aren't many locations. Like, normally with the, the codex is pretty informative and can tell you a lot. But it doesn't tell you where resources are. And even if you type in the name of something, it doesn't tell you. There's uh, two p places... Oh, and somebody just made it to Saturn. Good deal. Um, there's two places where the game gives you easy access to drop locations for uh, resources. Uh, the first one is in the market. A lot of resources, and I'm going to be referencing a lot, Alloy Plate, because it's the first big farm that exists for a new player. Uh... Oxium also exists, and I'm going to talk about that also, but I'm not going to go over each resource. There's so many videos on it. I'm just going to tell you how to look it up. So you can do any resource that you want. Eventually, if you play Warframe a lot, you're just going to remember the locations, or at least remember approximately where it is, and you'll end up finding it easier. But I'm just going to tell you how to look this up so you can do it yourself. This is the end game method. When you go, and you're never going to buy these. Don't ever buy these resources. When you hover over it, though, see how this is available for purchase for 30? It's only for, if I click on it, 1500 alloy plate. That's absolutely nothing. Like, according to this, I'd, I'd be rich. But if you hover over it, again, don't click it. It doesn't give you any information. This is the panel from down here, right? It's the same panel. If you hover over it, it gives you the drop planets for planetary resources. Um, Oxium is the other one, but this is in a separate category, at least as far as I'm considered. But Alloy Plate is a planetary resource, and this tells you the planets that it drops on. So we're going to cheat a little bit. Um, I have multiple monitors. I don't know if you do, but one of the things I do when I'm referencing this stuff is I always take like a quick screen grab um, to reference it or anything in game. And I'm going to check these planets one by one. And this is the new bro 101 way of looking for stuff. So I come here, the Venus, we got it from the list. Locations, Venus is the first one. And if you're seeing this, you're a little further in the game where you have a Lich and Nora's Nightwave. You probably just see Nightwave. What you're going to do is click on Resource Drones and it's going to swap over to this extra tab. And this circle is going to appear. Just hover over it. I don't, you don't even click on it. And it's going to bring up this info panel. And it's going to show me all of the resources that drop from the planet itself. Now, to read this, the topmost resource is the most common. Then the next two are uncommon, and the one at the bottom is literally just going to drop like two or three a mission. And the alloy plate, even though it is common, can be rare. So what you're going to look for when you're farming for something is you're going to look up a location. And like we got here, we have six planets. I'm going to go to those planets. This is Venus. 
and I am going to look for the planet where the resource that I am farming is the highest up, the most common. Because for this one, it's alloy plate. All right, the next one, just going to the next planet, is Phobos. I'm going to click here. Look, now it's rare. This is a bad planet to farm this on. Let's go to Ceres. All right, alloy plate is common here again. Uh, we're going to go to Jupiter. It's the next one. Alloy plate is rare. This is a terrible planet to farm it on. And the next one is Pluto. It's the fourth one, because this planet has five planetary resources. It's too far down to farm in mass quantities. And then we'll do the final planet, Sedna. Well, it's an uncommon, but if it's a common drop somewhere else, why would I want to come here? So that's food for thought. This is the easiest in-game method of finding a planetary resource. Okay. The second category is going to be a resource that drops from an enemy, and I'm going to cover that specifically, specifically with Oxium. So what I'm going to do, so we have several planets. Venus is common. Uh, Ceres is common. Pluto is uncommon. Jupiter is rare. Phobos is rare. And Sedna, I think, is uncommon. Okay, so we have two locations, Venus and Ceres, where it is the most common resource on that planet because we just went through and checked. So we look at Sedna, it's uncommon, okay, it gets thrown out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Venus, and I am going to look, if I am farming a resource, I am looking for a survival or a defense. It's most likely going to be a survival in all situations, except for a couple of niche unit-specific cases. So I'm going to look at this, it's a defense. 10% resource drop chance, 10% affinity from kills, 5% affinity from rifle skills, or rifle kills, because this is a dark sector. So we're going to be, ooh, pardon me, looking for dark sectors because they offer bonuses. This is, I know you're asking why is it a dark sector? This is part of a much older mechanic that was in the game that doesn't exist anymore. It was part of the Alliance system, and it just isn't a thing anymore. It has something to do with the Orokin lab in your clan, if you've ever been there, and you're like, what's this for? It had to do with these guys. Um, so this one offers a 10% resource drop chance, and that's what we're looking for. We're going to check the two planets, in this case, where the drop is common. This one is a 10% drop chance on this defense. If we look up here, and it's these little lotus symbols... 10% resource drop chance, 10% affinity from kills, 5% affinity for rifle kills. But this is a survival, and it offers the same resource drop chance. That's excellent. And if you are new in the game and farming alloy plate, this is going to be the location that you would go until you complete more of the star chart, if you need alloy plate. is this dark sector on Venus. And this would apply to any other thing. So say, like, I needed... Ferrite. I would look for a dark sector. There's a defense here. There are no survivals on Earth. So I have the choice between this Koba node. It's a defense. It doesn't show it because... Uh... Okay, it's not this node particularly. I have a something called a Lich right now. So it's showing the defense strength of the Lich mission. But if you look, when I click on it, it shows the regular defense. So I would go here if I needed to farm ferrite and I was low level or low MR or new to the game. So going back to alloy plate, I would then go to the other planet where it's common, which is Ceres, right? Alloy plate's common. And I would look for my dark sectors again. So you search around. This one is an assassination, the little eye with the crown. So that's no bonus. Click on this one. 
There is no, this is not a dark sector because it doesn't show me the bonuses. But if I look down here, I see two little lotus symbols. And because this planet is further along in the star chart, the dark sector bonuses are more. They're much higher. If you look, this is a defense, and it's got a 35% resource drop chance. The affinity goes up, and the affinity that you gain from whatever the RNG uh, bonuses. There's uh, shotguns, melees, pistols, rifles, and I think that's it for the bonus for the bottom part, where it's a bonus to a specific weapon. So this one's melee kills on defense. Gabby is a survival, though. So that's tons of kills, which is what we need. And this one's a 35% resource drop chance. Well, that's the highest it gets, is 35%. So this, being further along in the star chart, is much more preferable to early planets in the star chart. So I would try to do it on this, especially considering alloy plate is common. So let's look up, now that we've identified how to look up where something is in game, and then which nodes to select, which would always be the dark sectors if we have the option, because there are parts of the star chart where there are no dark sectors, we would know that if we're farming alloy plate and we were target farming that, because the first big farm that you have is for the Kavat uh, incubator upgrade segment, which is 120,000 alloy plate. We would then go to series, right? So maximum resource drop chance bonus, and we would do survivals until we're done. Nice and easy, this is how you look it up in game. Now let me show you the way everybody else uses once you have the entire star chart. Because as long as I've played the game, I think I have like 6,700 Steam hours and like about 3K in-game hours. I'm not going to remember what all these bonuses are. Well, there's actually a website that lists all of this out. So for our example, we're going to look up Alloy Plate. And I literally just Googled it. This is what I put in. Alloy Plate Warframe. As you can see, this is definitely purple. I've looked this up before. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to show me what it looks like. Here's what the deposit looks like, the thing you break on the ground, the container. This is the pickup, and it's going to show me a bunch of recommend, recommended farming locations. And out of all of these, what I'm going to look for is a dark sector. So as you see here, it's Gabby, uh, Gabby Sarah's survival on a that's a dark sector, and it's a survival. And all I'm going to do to double check that this is the right location, because there's no other dark sectors here, is I'm just going to look at that list, see that it's a dark sector, go to Sarah's, check that the dark sector is there, see what the bonus is, and then make sure that it's high up on this chart. And then once I see that it's the most common, 35% resource drop chance is the highest resource drop chance. So I'm not going to have a problem with this. And I am then just going to go farm this resource here. Now the other thing that needs to be mentioned is there's planetary resources, but there are also particularly Oxium. This one, you are going to need this for a bunch of stuff when producing basically everything. Uh, but if you see locations, and again, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to use my snipping tool. Boom. Got it over here. I'm going to pull it onto the second monitor. So, Oxium. Drops from Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Neptune, Pluto, Europa, Lua. So a bunch of locations. And the only way 
to really show this. is that when I pull up the wiki, and if you're farming for a resource, again, I Google, or I, this is the end game info, but this resource, without telling me, is also letting me know that this is a drop from a unit. And this sort of resource is what I was talking about, where occasionally defenses are something you need to go do. If you look at the farming locations, it lists a bunch of defenses, like Phobos, Jupiter, Pluto. The meta for this is actually the uh, Io Jupiter defense. But the way that you can tell easily that this is a resource that drops from a unit is if you notice, it doesn't show me what the cache looks like. The deposit... You remember how the alloy plate had the little drum? This one doesn't have that. And reason being is this isn't something you're ever really going to find outside of killing the osprey, the enemy that drops it. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out, and I'm literally just going to open all of these up and see what the enemies are. Read through what they are. Okay, Gristag 3, Executioner. Okay. Uh, Grustag 3 is a horrible group to farm, but they're random. You can't hard farm them unless you have, unironically right now, Barrows out and the Grustag 3 beacons out. You can farm them now, but uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a hit squad. So you can't farm resources from this guy very effectively, especially with Oxium. Uh, then you have Executioner Knock. And you look at where he drops. Okay, it's a... This is a Rathum. Yeah, Arena. And this is just from experience, because anytime you see Executioner, um, think Sedna Arenas. Okay, so we have the Carabas. Not an easily farmable location. Uh, Ospreys. Scavenger Jones. Mine Ospreys. Help values of all Ospreys. Okay, farming locations. Okay, the defense. It looks like these drop or these spawn more in defense missions. And you have to kill them, you can't let them self destruct. Okay, so we'll hold this tab open. Nemes, I think this is a railjack enemy. Daedalus, Malice, and Vedzol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Daedalist, Shadow Debt. Yeah, anything that lists a uh, an operation, you might not be able to farm it. Alright, Malice. If you're fighting that guy, you probably don't need this guide. Uh, so, Nimi's Archwing. Nimi's Scout, okay. They're spawned by Daedalus, Malice, and Vedzol. Okay, so this is a spawnable enemy that's dependent on something else spawning it. Wouldn't rely on that too much. So, it looks like by default, the Ospreys are where it's at. And the two other... I closed it without looking at them. Okay, the uh, two other variants down here, these are Railjack. And to be honest, if you're this far into the mission, or into the star chart, you probably don't need an Oxium how-to. But these are Railjack, these variants. 
But anyway. Um, or was it uh, Railjack and Corpus ship tile sets? So our main source of Oxium is going to be the Oxium Osprey. And because of its drop rate, which is 100%, every time you blow one of these up, it will drop Oxium. You will then look for missions that drop, or that spawn the most number of Oxium Ospreys. And these guys love defense missions. So we're going to look for none of these missions are Dark Sectors. So it is literally the highest level one you can do. But due to the tile sets, Jupiter IO ends up being the fastest because you can blow everything up the easiest. So as long as you pick one of these, the Oxium Osprey will farm. And th normally this would be just pure RNG if you didn't have the wiki on this. But this is what you have to look out for also, is that it's not a planetary resource, but it's a resource from a specific unit. Now, does this seem like a, a lot of a hassle? A little bit. Um, but if you decide to start your own clan or uh, join a clan that's in the process of farming pigments, you're going to have to get used to farming from a unit. But that's for a later video. Um, but this is how you farm, or this is how you find where the resource is, and how you pick the node of where to go farm it. So IO is here. You just do the defense mission. Uh, try to get to 20 rounds. Um, go to Gabby for alloy plate. Try to get to 20, uh, 20 minutes. Um, and kill as many enemies as you can. These resource farms get more effective per minute after about 30 minutes because there is a ramp up in the spawn speed. So it's food for thought. This is the most 101 level resource farm I could come up with. How to find in game where resources, the exception to that rule where it's a unit that drops the resource how to pick the node, and the Warframe wiki resource, which I will leave a link to the Warframe wiki itself and to the resource chart in the comment, or not in the comment, but in the uh, info panel for people who are brand new to farming. And this way, you won't have to go through a million videos on YouTube where they list out specific name, uh, specific resources and where to farm it. The resource nodes generally haven't changed in years. They've added stuff, added steel path, but the locations and how to farm specific stuff really just doesn't change that much. Um, I hope this helps. Thank you for watching my video. Have a blessed day.